believe the individual is the answer to the challenges of health care. But we can't engage the individual in changing outcomes unless individuals have access to the information they need to do so. The right to protect the health and well-being of every person, of those we love, is a basic human right. A right defined in the United Nations Universal Declaration on Human Rights. Yet in the United States today, health care is the leading cause of bankruptcy. And the lack of it, the leading cause of the suffering associated with finding out too late in the disease progression process that someone you love is really, really sick. I grew up spending summers and the holidays with my uncle. I remember his love of crossword puzzles and trying to teach us to play football. I remember how much he loved the beach. I remember how much I loved him. He was diagnosed one day with skin cancer, which all of a sudden was brain cancer, and in his bones. He didn't live to see his son grow up, and I never got to say goodbye. We define diagnosis today as the determination of the presence of disease from its signs and symptoms. Yet diseases often begin so much earlier than when symptoms first appear. We see a world in which every person has access to actionable health information at the time it matters. A world in which no one ever has to say, if only I'd known sooner. A world in which no one ever has to say goodbye too soon. Technology can and is transforming our world and many policy issues along with it. Today, laboratory information drives 70 to 80 percent of clinical decisions. Yet until a few months ago, people in many states couldn't even get copies of their own lab results for tests ordered for them by their physicians, even if they paid for it. And today, I can go buy a deadly, exotic animal, a venomous viper, a military truck or armored vehicle. I can buy a tank, which a quick search of the internet has informed me, and I quote, is generally available for any budget or situation. <laughs> but I can't order a blood-based pregnancy test or an allergy test because that could be dangerous. God forbid I stop eating peanuts. A woman trying to conceive a child can't order a fertility test and someone worried about her or a partner's risk of a sexually transmitted infection can't order an STI test. And there's 110 million cases of STIs in the U.S. today, all of which are treatable. When individuals have access to the information about their bodies, they can begin to change outcomes. Type 2 diabetes alone, which drives 20% of our health care costs, can be reversed through changes in lifestyle 
in diet, in exercise. Yet today, there's 80 million Americans who are pre-diabetic, and 90% of them don't know that they are. Another 15% of our healthcare costs is associated just with the choice an individual makes to be compliant with the prescriptions written for them by their physician. But engagement comes with knowledge, and knowledge comes with access. My own life's work in building Theranos is to redefine the paradigm of diagnosis away from one in which people have to present with a symptom in order to get access to information about their bodies, to one in which every person, no matter how much money they have or where they live, has access to actionable health information at the time it matters. Over the course of the last 11 years, we've made it possible to run any laboratory test for anywhere from 50 to 90 percent off of Medicare reimbursement rates. We've made it possible to run comprehensive laboratory tests from a tiny sample or a few drops of blood that could be taken from a finger. And we've made it possible to eliminate the tubes and tubes of blood that traditionally have to be drawn from an arm and replaced it with the nanotainer. We've made it possible for information to be accessible at the time and place that matters, closest to where people live and closest to where they see their physicians. And we've made it possible for actionable information to be accessible by creating a decentralized infrastructure with the oversight and analytics of a centralized pathology framework. Today, 40 to 60 percent of people are not compliant with the requisition from a physician to go get a lab test done. They're not compliant because they can't afford it. Even if they're insured, deductibles increasingly are so high that people can't pay the few hundred dollars out of pocket to get a test done. They're not compliant because they're scared of needles. It's one of the basic human fears right up there with fear of spiders and fear of heights. They're not compliant because of inaccessibility to the locations they'd need to go to during times they'd often have to take off from work to be able to get a test done. And they can't do that. We see a world in which every person knows how much a test they're paying for is going to cost them before they get that test done, every time. I remember listening to a woman who came to one of our wellness centers to get tested. She talked about a conversation with her physician in which she'd raised her concerns about risk of hereditary diseases that had afflicted her family, and she asked, to get a series of tests done. The physician said to her, well, insurance isn't going to cover this. Do you still want to do it? And she said, well, yeah, how much does it cost? The physician didn't know. What she could figure out was that it would likely cost her a few thousand dollars to get these tests done, tests for which she was not symptomatic for those conditions yet. And she couldn't afford it. People will go broke if they have to spend thousands of dollars out of pocket in order to get the tests done they need 
to begin to understand their risk of a condition before they develop it. I'll remember all my life the face of a pregnant woman who showed up at one of our locations, and she'd been turned away from the other places she'd gone because she couldn't afford the ability to do a test. And she was so scared that she was going to be turned away here, too. When she saw the cost of her tests would be little more than the cost of a meal, the gratitude on her face struck my heart. No person should have to go through that fear. We see a world in which no one has to go through the pain of traditional phlebotomy. I remember reading an email from the father of a little girl. He talked about taking her to the hospital and watching as they stuck her soft tissue again and again in the search for what he called the tiny invisible vein. I remember watching elderly people whose veins collapse as they age, having to get blood drawn from their hand, which can cause so much suffering. And I remember talking to so many cancer patients who will tell you they can take the treatments, and they can take the radiation, and they can take the visits, but the fear and bruising and transfusions associated with all the blood that needs to be collected in order for them to get care breaks them and those who love and care for them down. By making the cost of testing so low that any combination of tests can be run for the same cost that those tests would have cost individually before, it becomes possible to engage individuals in the testing process in such a way in which they get the information they need at the time it matters. We see a world in which the interaction with a physician becomes actionable because people can be tested at the time and frequency that matters so that clinicians and individuals can begin to understand not just where they are, but where they're headed. And the typical clinician visit will change from one in which today is generally characterized by me seeing my doctor, for example. Doc says, Elizabeth, haven't seen you for a year. Go get a test done. I go, let's say, do a routine set of labs. Doc calls me, says, ran a cell blood count. Your hemoglobin was really low. I'm going to put you on this therapy. Come back in, do another set of labs so that I can figure out why that initial test was out of range. But in order to do that, I need more tubes of blood to be able to triage the condition. So I go, and this three office visit, two lab, one unnecessary prescription process can be consolidated into a single lab that can be accessible before I see my clinician. Because any test can be run from a tiny sample for less cost than any one of them would have cost before. We see a world in which people get access to laboratory information late at night, on a weekend, early in the morning, in rural areas. And in establishing decentralized and distributed testing frameworks, a world in which decentralized care begins to become possible in developing economies. This future is beginning now, but engagement begins with the individual. 
And if I had one wish standing here with all of you, it would be that today, just for a minute, you think about the fact that we have this right, a human right, to engage with information about ourselves, about our bodies, and for those that we love to engage with information about themselves. And when we do that, we will change our lives. And the lives of those we love will change. And we'll begin to change our healthcare system and our world.